just like that. We're back. We're back. Bud's verse. It's me, James. My buddy Chad. Say hello, Chad. Hello. <laughs> mm. Welcome back, everybody. Another episode of Bud's verse. Uh, we're gonna have a good one today. Yeah. We Got have a top a good ten one. list that kind of makes me hope something bad happens to you. Yeah. Just me kidding. too. <laughs> <laughs> what are we celebrating today? We are celebrating. Uh, it's August twenty fifth, two thousand two. 2002, listen to me, 2022. Ah, yes. Went back in time there for a minute. Go back 20 years. Um, uh, so, if, if you're listening to this on this day, this is what day it is. Um, but as always, whenever you're listening to Bud's Verse, it is this day. Whatever day you're listening to it on. Okay. We got the day. Yeah. So, it's National Banana Split Day. Uh-huh. Since those, those are yummy. Those are really good. National Banana Split Day. Banana Split Sweet. Day. Who doesn't like banana splits? Uh, yeah. Banana splits are awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, I like them. So go out there and get you a national, a national. Go out there and get you a banana split today uh, and celebrate. Yeah. Uh, it's also National Kiss and Make Up Day. Ah, yes. So if you have a friend or you have a spouse or and you had some bad blood, it's time to bury the hatchet. Just kiss and make up. Get it's over time it. to, you know, move on. Forgive and forget. Yeah. Don't, don't stay in that mess. So kiss and make up, make make amends with everybody you need to, yeah, and live in peace and harmony, uh, just like the people of the sixties and seventies <laughs> did. <laughs> Excellent advice. Excellent. Very good. Um, and then uh, last, it's National Secondhand Wardrobe Day. Secondhand so wardrobe. It's those hand me downs. It's yes. those. I can't wear this anymore. You wear it. Yeah, I can't. You go for it. Yeah. Perfect. Every, so every younger sibling, yeah. our youngest sibling, has that. Has that. So and there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Hey. Huh. Most clothes good? today are made to look like that anyway. Yeah. Like nowadays, the, the worn out look. The yep. Like you just went into a thrift store and yep. got it. Uh, that's kind of the end look. Yeah. Um, coming back, uh, along with all the '90s fashion. Sure. 90s fashion coming back in. So, yeah. Break out 80s, all those. Like, <coughs> yeah. Excuse me. Eight, late 80s and uh, early 90s is coming. It's weird. Oh, yeah. It's very weird. It is weird. It, it brings me back. I, I look at shoes and I look at stuff and I'm like, man, that reminds me of the yeah. 90s. It reminds like everybody's me. wearing Air Force Ones or yeah. like the old school Jordans, like the flat, like skater shoes almost. Like, yeah. what are we doing? It's right. a reason why we don't wear those anymore, people. <laughs> yeah, I know. They're so. horrible for your feet. Right. But, hey, whatever. <laughs> but it's coming back. And the mullets. Um, yeah. I cannot believe that's making a comeback. What yeah. can you say? The mullet, of all things. The worst yeah. of all air styles. Yeah. Coming back. The mullet. Party up. Party the back. It just, this is like, up front. Yeah. It's just like people forgot what was cool. And just decided, oh, yeah, well. You know, that's not cool anymore. Uh, and then they went like crazy, super futuristic. And then yeah. they're like, ah, let's go back to. Let's go back. Go back to the 90s. The 90s were MC a good Hammer time. Pants. I can't wait for those to come back. Yeah. Flannels. So they'll be the next thing. Flannels will come back. Grunge will be in another yeah. five years or so. Grunge, flannel. Yeah. Uh, like everybody's like, I don't care. Yeah. It's all, everyone's goth and grungy. <laughs> but that won't be till. Still got a couple more years on that one. Yeah. <laughs> we got to do the. Hammer pants. Hammer pants. Ho, back. ho, 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 ho. Yeah. MC Hammer, man. Uh, but those are our national days. Banana split, kiss and makeup, and secondhand wardrobe day. So Cool. You could do that in a day. Yeah. Do so, that in a day or yeah. do that today. Yeah. Yeah. Have banana split and make up with somebody. <laughs> and then, Perfect. Uh, and then wear, their, wear, wear somebody else's clothes. Wear someone else's clothes. <laughs> yeah. Go to Goodwill and get some new clothes. Yeah. So Perfect. I like it. Sounds good. Alrighty. Top ten. Here we go. Okay. This is the top ten people who gained genius status. Okay. Genius status. Now. Talking my level now. Genius yeah. status. We're leaving normalcy <laughs> and going straight to Chaddam. Here All we right. go. They gained genius status from brain damage. Okay. Well then that that puts me close in the category then. Yeah. 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 I know. I'm closer to that than actual other genius. 
Yeah. Yeah. You're probably closer to brain damage than genius. But that's true. I me too. But so that's okay. It's a fine line. Yeah. Yeah. And it's all in the eye of the beholder because these people it worked out for them. In 2006, there's the first one. Name's Derek. I'll leave last names out because who knows? Okay. So we don't need to know everything about him. Yeah. In 2006, a nightmare became real. Derek, a resident in Denver, Colorado, Colorado? dove into a pool and struck his head on the shallow bottom. Oh. He blacked out and woke up in the hospital disoriented and terrified. It's the kind of accident every parent fears. An accident that leaves most paralyzed. And Derek wasn't immune to the dangers. His head injury left him with massive hearing loss, chronic headaches, and memory problems that still persist to this day. Wow. Yet Derek considers the accident the best thing that's ever happened to him. Because oh, wow. it turned him into a musical prodigy. Really? Yeah. In the days after the accident, Derek began to see moving black and white shapes, a continuous stream of musical notation flowing behind his closed eyes. What is that? So he hit his head so hard. Hit his head in the pool. That music just started. And now when he closes his eyes. He sees notes. It's just flow of music behind. Like and He just sees it. That's crazy. Behind his closed eyes. Isn't that cool? <clears throat> Even though he's never been musically inclined, he suddenly had the ability to sit down at a piano and play intricate pieces that take most people years to perfect. Although he doesn't understand his ability, he says it's, he's grateful for it every day. I bet. I would, too. Dude, I'm, that is amazing. I'm going to go search for some short pools and You, you have jump one. In. Just jump in. Yeah. Of course, he's probably... You can touch the bottom, right? Yeah. I say, I'm very short, <laughs> so... <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah, I might be okay. I just dive in and be like, <laughs> well, well, just that didn't work. No, jump in the bathtub. Jump, jump in the bathtub. <laughs> there you go. That's almost guaranteed to work. Well, uh, let's see. This guy named Jason, a furniture salesman in 2002. Okay. So that's the year you tried to take us back to. I did. Uh, he was leaving a an establishment, and he was blindsided by two mugger, muggers. They knocked him to the ground, kicked him repeatedly in the head. In the midst of the, ta- of the attack, he saw a blinding white flash. Next thing he knew, he was laying on the concrete, dazed and bleeding, just another victim of a senseless act of violence. Mm, poor Jason. <laughs> Left him with a, a severe concussion and weird distortions in his vision. Although he could, he could still see normally, there was now a shear over everything, like every object had been broken down into lines and shapes. Oh, wow. That's weird. A high school dropout, uh, Jason didn't immediately realize that the strange things he was seeing was actually geometric representations of mathematical formulas. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Somehow his brain injury had given him the ability to see math. To see math. To see math. Wow. So he could when just researchers, there. Yeah. When s- researchers imaged his brain... And showed him a series of equations. The visual processing centers in his brain lit up. Wow. Yeah. It's like they got jump started. His brain was turning the numbers into pictures. Jason has since enrolled in college and learned more about his condition. And the number theory behind his in, in inexplicable visions. That is crazy. That is crazy. That is cool, though. That's like like uh, futuristic, almost. Yeah. Like, you know, like the Google you, lenses or something. Yeah, like, like you can look at something like look at a table and all of a sudden like it's just mathematically like, OK, this is the equation. For it's just this breaking down into shapes. Yeah. It's a perfect right angle here. Blah. Yeah. What? Yeah. That's great. That tells you you got a lot of stuff going on in your brain. A lot. And you just got jarred loose. Yeah. You just got <laughs> jarred loose. I don't know about that, but yeah, it's just in the there. perfect hit in the perfect place. The perfect time. Just yeah. Like a spark almost. Just jump starting a part of your brain that like wow. would be normally it's way too confusing for us. We would be I don't know what we would be if we had full capacity of our brain. We'd be, like crazy. be able to use it. Yeah. Something'd be wrong with it. I mean, we'd be very, very well <laughs> well I guess we'll find out someday. Yeah. Still. Anyway. Here's John. For the last three decades of his life, John was a normal man in a normal world. He had a wife and a child and a blossoming career as a chiropractor. Okay, chiropractor. He played golf and kept up with the stock market. Then one day, he almost died. Mm. 
While playing golf in 1988, he suffered a a a debilitating brain hemorrhage. He was rushed to the hospital when his condition worsened uh, to the point that doctors were forced to surgically remove a portion of his brain. Oh, my gosh. When he woke up, the chiropractor was gone, and in its place was an artist. An artist. An artist. What started as a series of surreal dreams, surreal dreams turned or transformed into a compulsion to paint. Mm. Uh, what was his name? John. John. John quit his job and took up art full time, splitting his attention between painting and sculpting. Man. Wow. You got to be good. You're going to quit your yeah. job. I mean, that's not like, it, oh, it's got like a side thing. I like to paint on the side. No, you got to be good if you're going to do it for a living. I mean, full time. Yeah. After 30 years after the accident, he still paints. And his works have been featured in galleries all around the world. So and he's good. All that for just cutting a chunk of his they brain out. They just snip a little bitty piece of his brain out and no longer a chiropractor. And just go, I'm going to be an artist. I'm world renowned. Wow. That's crazy. Isn't it? That's pretty cool. That's crazy. We've got a reminder. You want the musician or home. you want art? Which would you prefer? Um, I don't know. Let's let's go back to music. No, no, no. I'm just saying. Oh, which, which one prefer? I prefer? Yeah. Oh, oh. There's more music um, and art coming up. I'm just saying. I think I would like music Me too. more because I like music now. Yeah. You know. So I think if I would plus c- you'd be able to do it with other people. Yeah. It's more of an inclusive thing. Because I can't, uh, you know, uh, I can't play any instrument uh-uh. right now. Me but neither. if all of a sudden I woke up one day and I was like, this piano makes sense and I can just play whatever or this guitar or whatever, mm-hmm. I would, that'd be amazing. It'd be pretty cool. Yeah. Just sit down and tinker to entertain yourself and, yeah. and like find express out. an emotion somehow or like just to get feelings, kind of yeah. put them on the table, just leave them there for a little while or whatever, however you're feeling. Express it musically. That'd be pretty dang cool. It would be cool. Yeah. I would pick music. Definitely. For sure. I can't even play the spoons, man. I can't do squat. (laughs) Spoons. Uh, Yeah, that was John. Okay, here we go. Here's Lee. Lee. Lee was 49 years old in 2009 when she uh, fell into a ravine uh, on her Colorado ranch. The accident Mm. was catastrophic. She sustained injuries in both her head and her spine, and it looked that she would, and it looked like she was destined to be in a wheelchair for the rest of her life. Against all expectations, Lee's spine healed, but her head now, uh, that was a different story. After the accident, Lee had no idea who she was. She couldn't remember her childhood, her mother, or anything about her life before the fall. When the disappearance of her, with the disappearance of her memories, she'd also lost her emotions. <laughs> Even now, she knows when to smile or laugh, but doesn't entirely understand why she's doing it. So she's like a psychopath. <laughs> I guess. Isn't that a thing? They don't have any emotion? Don't know how to... Sh- yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. In a way, they don't know social cues and mm-hmm. how to express emotion and stuff. But almost as if the loss of her past life left a vacant hole to be filled, the accident endued her with a whole new palette of abilities. In a bizarre combination, she's taken up art as a way to express her newfound interest in math. <laughs> what? Art and math. When she draws, she says she's creating a, an image based on mathematical equations. There's so the math another, again. Like, see, drawing math. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. That just that, kinda shows how important math is. Yeah. And apparently our brain uses it a lot. Uh, uh it's in there. To do it's everything. Unlock it. You know? That's what I mean. I should have fell like jumped <laughs> off the desk on my head. Yeah. When I was having I trouble in geometry class. or algebra class. Well um well that's I mean that's cool for her, but it's also a bummer for her too because yeah. she forgot everything and everyone. Yeah. You're like you're forced to be a completely different person. Person. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, a different in, not different person, but you're starting from scratch. Yeah. Which means whatever person you, and everyone has little changes. Sure. Right? Yeah, we all but change you, a little. You kind of cherish the parts of you that got you to where you are. Right. 
Sometimes. Sometimes the bad stuff, you're like, ugh, the stuff you have to deal with. Deal now, with, yeah. You don't miss that, but the stuff that makes you who you are, a good person, the feelings yeah. and emotions that go with it, to not be able to remember it or feel those things ever again, right. that's pretty sad. But to be confused, because I guarantee she has to be a little bit confused, like, especially in social situations, because yeah. if she's like... You know, everyone's laughing. Yeah. I guess I'll laugh. I don't know why I'm laughing, but, uh, <laughs> you know. I don't know why I'm doing that. Exactly. <laughs> you know, that's got to be a confusing life to live. Or like you walk into a room and everyone's sad and you're like, okay, I guess I got to be sad. You know, I don't, I don't know what's going on. That, But then you could be like, but I can draw you a picture. Yeah. You want me to? Yeah. I mean, I'll draw you a picture of math. Yeah. What do you mean? Well, here, let me show you. Let me show you. Oh, I get addition now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's cool. <laughs> <laughs> what does Nick say? <laughs> New girl episode. Yeah. Oh, I, I think I understand something now. He was watching a show or reading a book or something. He's like, I think I understand pain now or yeah, understand or something, something stu- stupid. Something, something obvious. Yeah. Anyway. In the 1980s, a psychologist wrote about his experiences with a patient that he only identifies as Mr. Z. Mr. Z. When Mr. Z was nine years old, he was shot in the forehead during a home invasion. Ugh. The bullet completely passed through his head and left the boy partially paralyzed and unable to speak. But while the incident stripped Mr. Z of most forms of logical thought, it left him with a curious ability. He could take apart just about anything and put it together again. Really? Yeah. I wish I could do that. In addition to his mechanical abilities, Mr. Z was able to remember random facts with perfect clarity. Really? Such as street names to areas he'd only visited once. Uh, Unfortunately, despite these unusual gifts, Mr. Z continued to struggle with his disabilities well into his adult life. Yeah. But still. So he he excelled in those things. Like photographic memory type stuff with perfect detail. Perfect detail. That's pretty cool. And he can take things apart? Take anything apart, put it back together. Yeah. I wouldn't be able to do that. No, I wouldn't either. I can't. I know I can't for no a way. fact. Every time I've ever worked on anything, there's extra parts. Yeah. Not a good thing. Well, they weren't needed anyway. Apparently. Just throw them away. Usually things work again. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Here's one. Franco. Franco. Franco, Franco. Franco is Italiano <laughs> living in San Francisco in the 60s. Began suffering from a strange and sudden illness. He was racked uh, racked by fevers and forced him into bed and brought on a state of delirium. When he suffered, he dreamed. He dreamed of his childhood home in Italy, which he'd left almost a decade earlier. When he woke up from these episodes, he would paint his dreams, all of them scenes from his childhood. As it turns out, Franco was painting perfect photorealistic snapshots of the village where he grew up. Memories which his brain has stored away for years. Wow. Somehow brain damage from his feverish fits, uh, which are now believed to have been a form of epilepsy, had activated something in his brain that allowed him to recall every single detail from those childhood memories. That's crazy. That is something. I've tried, not that, of course, but I've tried, like, sometimes to think back and be like, what is the first memory I can remember, like, mm-hmm. as a kid? You know, the first thing I can remember. It's hard to do. Uh, oh, man. Yeah. E- to think back and be like, okay, what is the first memory that I had? Yeah. Uh, you know your brain's got it somewhere in there. It's in there. It's in there somewhere. Yeah. But I look for the, where's 1A? Here we go. Yeah. Where you at? And, and it's hard. But yeah. it would be cool to be able to do that, though. Just to be like, okay, yeah, I remember I remember that day when I was four, you know, and yeah. what I saw and that would be really cool. Be yeah. a neat neat little trick to do. It would be. I mean with I mean, photographic detail. Yeah. It would be cool. I can remember like a lot of stuff from like I was born in eighty. Okay. I can remember a trip or drive to Alaska. In 82. Okay. But I can remember a lot of stuff before that, too. Yeah. They're just little stills with a little bit of movement here and there. Yeah. But it's a lot of memories of, you know, my family and yeah. me sitting on the floor. Because I, you know, 
I couldn't communicate. Right. But I remembered. Like, I, I can remember those things, like how frustrating it was not being able to talk. Like, I, I have little things like that, but that's they're just little glimpses. But I can't, not like this. I wish I had photo, like. I, you're doing way better than photo me. Photorealistic. I can't like, remember anything like that. Like, yeah. uh, when I think back, uh, like, my childhood, I'm, I'm like, the farthest I can go back is probably, like, five years old. Really? Yeah. And. I got a lot from, you know. From that forward. I can remember a lot of days from two years old. I can't. I can't remember what I did yesterday. one. Much less. But I can't. Remember that my wife was, you know, what is for dinner tonight? Yeah. Hey, babe, what's for dinner? I just told you. <laughs> I know it's frustrating for her, but that's what happens when you don't practice it. You know, I have very good memory. I just don't practice it. Don't use it. Me neither. Like an idiot. Apparently, waste of talent. Anthony, this is number four. Anthony in 1994. He's a doctor you now. Uh, doctor Anthony can't say his last name. Not gonna. Had just hung up on a payphone. When a blinding light came out of nowhere. It was a UFO. And hit the phone. Oh. And then rebo- <laughs> rebounded into his face. Oh my gosh. A blinding light. The impact threw him backward and by his own account knocked him out of his body. Oh gosh. Oh goodness. He remembers no, uh, looking down at his unconscious self while people rushed over and tried to resuscitate him. Then he was slammed back into his body in, the, in a world of pain. He was just struck by lightning. That's nuts. Oh, gosh. Woo! Over the next few months, tried to get back to a normal life, but felt strange. He couldn't seem to focus on work as easily, and his memory was a little spotty. Soon, uh, even those problems disappeared, and just when life seemed to to have settled, he was struck again, this time by... An insatiable desire to make music. <laughs> oh, I thought he was going to say "Show about lightning gonna, again. Yeah, I don't know if that's... I that, don't think that's possible. Uh, he wanted to make music. His desire soon became an obsession. He was hearing music in his dreams, but he didn't know how to play the piano or get the songs out of his head. So this 42-year-old surgeon began teaching himself to play on a borrowed piano. And the more he learned, the more his obsession grew. Every spare moment was spent in music like an itch that couldn't be scratched. That is nuts. So he got struck by lightning. Yeah. Became a musician. Yeah. That's crazy. Well, it became like a, it's not like he could just sit down and play. Right. He had to teach himself. He had to teach himself how to play but just had because it. the music was in his head and he's like, I can hear it. I can, I have a, I have to play this, you know, right. like I have to learn this part. I have to hear it outside of my head, you know. That's pretty cool. That is cool. That but I mean, it is a gift—the gift of music. Like he's, he's, it's, it's, it's like he's creating it or whatever in his own head. Yeah. He just has to figure out how to put it out on, into the world, you know. He's like uh, a real life powder. Remember that movie, Powder? Yeah, yeah. We got yeah. struck by lightning. Yep. At the very end. well, he was yeah. lightning. <laughs> yeah. Along. Yeah. Anyway. Temporal lobe seizures caused by the lightning strike. But still, it's a brain damage, but not for him. Yeah. Loved it. That's uh, crazy. 2011. Here's Heather. Was hit on the head by a rear hatch of her SV, SU, SUV. SUV. Golly. Hiccup. Bad timing. The impact knocked her to the ground and gave her what doctors call a mild traumatic brain injury. Sheesh. Uh, it didn't seem particularly serious, but never quite felt the same or felt like herself after the incident. Lights seemed too bright, colors too vivid. She began locking herself in a dark room to escape the overstimulation. Uh, geez Louise. Man, that she was couldn't tank. go to work. She couldn't be around her family. She would sleep for most of the day only for the simplest of tasks uh, to work her back into exhaustion. With a single careless blow to the head, her life had become a living nightmare. Then a concerned neighbor brought over a set of ragged uh, paint brushes and suggested she try painting to help her relax. She scoffed at the idea, but gave it a shot and never stopped. The impact to her head seemed to have jogged her, uh, jogged her into a completely new personality. Once a businesswoman... She moved out of the city, bought a goat, and took up life as a painter. <laughs> bought a goat? Bought a goat. 
I guess you got to have a goat if you're a painter. She's happier and than she's ever been in her life. It's like painter 101. I mean, she abandoned her family, bro. Like, she yeah. left ever. This is not me anymore. Like, this, I'm a completely different yeah. person. What This life that I have here, I do not want. Man, and I like, feel bad. That would be horrible. Because my wife is, her name's Heather. Yeah. It's not this Heather. Yeah. But if all of a sudden well, she hit her head and she was like, I'm done with y'all. Yeah, I'd I'm, rather live with a goat yeah, than I'm a moving, paintbrush. I'm getting a boat, a goat, <laughs> and I'm moving out to the country, y'all. Uh, I'm painting pictures. Yeah, that that's a, crazy. That's uh, that, but she's happier than she's ever been. I guess in her way, she's happy. But man, that's it's traumatic. What's really weird is my wife wants a goat. Uh oh, she talks about it all the time. She ever been hitting head? Careful, nope. bro. No, but she wants the goat here with us, and I I tell her no. I was like, we don't need a goat. He do. No, it would eat everything. Yeah, but just the grassy stuff. No, it would eat the grass, it'd eat the oh. pool, it'd eat the chairs. It won't eat the pool. Yeah, it will. There's nothing to eat. It, uh, goats eat everything. Just get a goat. I'm not going to do Orlando, it. I'll get you one. <gasps> I have an idea. You're not going to get me a goat. <laughs> or we will have goat stew the next day. Megan's listening to this, and he wouldn't kill it. I would. You would not. Don't even think of Don't even try. Ah. <sighs> I'd kill that goat. It's okay. You have some special occasions coming up soon. Yeah. I got you, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's okay. <laughs> Turnabout's fair play. Yeah. I'll get you some stuff. Well, I live in an apartment. You can't. I, there's all kinds have to, of things. You'll have to keep it here. No. I'd take a goat. I love goats. I love goats. I'd rather have a goat than a cat. I do, too. I mean, I love goats. I'd rather goats. have a goat than a dog. Yeah. Besides, you already have a goat. Yeah. Just kidding. Don't it's hurt me. All right, Orlando. Orlando. Um, let's see. While playing as a boy in 1979, a baseball whacked him in the head. Orlando hit the ground, stunned, and then got up to keep playing ball. He didn't realize it right away, but his entire life was about to change. It started with headaches. For days, the 10-year-old boy suffered in silence while his head throbbed with blinding pain. Then the headache stopped. And Orlando realized oh, that he could remember everything. He knew that he knew what clothes he'd worn, what the weather would be w- had been like, and he had what he had for <laughs> what he had for breakfast, and every day of it, for every day of his life, he could remember every detail of his life. Wow! Always for every day. That's, That's cool. Crazy. That is a memory. That is. Besides. Uh, eidetic memory of the past, the baseball had also struck uh, Orlando with the ability to know the future. <gasps> He'd become a calendar calculator. Really? Not that you know, you're not Nostradamus here. Yeah. Uh, for any given date, he could instantly calculate the day of the week, even if the day fell in hundreds of years into the future. Those days, the 10-year-old Wonderkin uh, are these days. 37-year-old man who's dedicated to helping researchers understand the role brain damage plays in human intelligence. Wow. Any day in the future. So, so what day is it? October 31st, if you, 2120. Yeah, you could say... It's well, a Tuesday. That's a Tuesday. Yeah, whatever. I was thinking Tuesday. Ah, what if it is linked, a Tuesday? Bro. What Look if, it up. What if we phone? nailed it? Uh, Dude, if we nailed it, we have brain damage in the office. <laughs> <laughs> if we nailed it, what did you say the date was? I'm gonna look it up. Cause <laughs> I was thinking. Did you have Tuesday. a question? Let's finish first. We'll look it up. Uh, <coughs> yeah, but uh, I was gonna ask, in your opinion, yeah, if you like had an what's it called an i i did it i did it memory i did it memory yeah. wouldn't that in in sense in 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 theory I guess mm-hmm. make you a genius. Because you could literally yes. read Clear. any book Absolutely. and remember it without hesitation. Verbatim, yes. So, like, even if you were like, "Oh, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm going to read this medical journal." Yep. Now you got to still read it, yeah. but then you're going to be like, "I know everything in it." Yep. You'd be a genius. You could do anything. Anything. That would be awesome. I wish yeah. I had that. I don't. No, no, I don't. <laughs> I don't. Yeah. Uh, to have perfect recall. Perfect. Recall of something you read, yeah, year, decades yeah, ago, yeah, and just be like, oh yeah, it's on page thirty-two. I remember yeah. that. That would be insane. 
So useful. And you know, like for our job. Absolutely. Like we preach the Bible. Absolutely. That's what we do. We're ministers. To like not have to turn in there. And to be able to just get up there and be like. Every bit of it's on the tip of your tongue because yeah. you just know it. You just oh know it. Goodness. It's like you're reading it. You, oh my gosh, it'd be awesome, man. That would be so all cool. inspiring, my friend. Yeah. That'd be something. One more while you're looking up 2120. October 31st, 2120. October 31st, 2120. Here's Jim. Jim was 14 years old. A car accident destroyed his life. His mother was killed in the crash, and Jim lapsed into a coma. Ugh. Due to uh, extensive brain injuries he'd suffered. The doctors didn't think uh, he'd live more than a few weeks. Against all odds, he survived. But after six weeks, he woke up from the coma and began a long, slow process of physical rehabilitation. Soon he was able to return to school, and that's when he realized that he would never be a normal teenager again. Okay. Before the accident, Jim had had no interest in math. After it became as easy as breathing. Without studying, he aced his high school geometry mastery test. Then he skipped up to calculus, passing every exam with ease. Memorizing any number, uh, mem- uh, memorizing any number was as simple as looking at it. He memorized 200 digits of pi in a little over a day. Oh, gosh. Beneath every day-to-day activity, numbers were scrolling through Jim's head. Endless sequences of digits. Now he's 39 years old and the numbers numbers are still there. While he went on to build a normal life after the accident, he says that the numbers are calming. It's like an old friend. (laughs) Wow. That is cool. See, just remember... Crazy Imagine, numbers. Man. I bet you he never has to put a phone number in his thing. He yeah, remember it you all. see the number. Yeah. And you're good. You're good. If he can remember 200, 200 digits of pi, pi he can remember I'm seven sure digits. he would get seven digits pretty easy. Easy. Even ten. I don't even include the um, area code. October 31st, 2120. This is Monday. No, it's oh. a Thursday. Rough it's a days. Thursday. Um, but one in seven chance we missed. But it. we miss, We were only off by two. That's pretty good. And it began with a T. Yeah, it was only that's two what it was. It was, you know, it was on the tip of our tongue. We just need to hit our head harder, and then we can, ah, we'll zone in on it. Duh. If we get Thursday, yeah, um, that's what it was. I wouldn't. I didn't hit my head hard enough. So <coughs> that so got that's up to crazy. Thursday. It's on a Thursday. Oh well. We were almost geniuses for a split second. Almost. Regardless, we were connected. So. Yeah. We were here. Because as soon as you said I was thinking, it's on a Tuesday. Tuesday. And then you said, Tuesday. And I was like, oh. That would be dope. I wonder, we're idiots apart, but yeah. together we're geniuses. Yeah, we're together. <laughs> <laughs> that's, what, that's what we're coming to learn on Budsverse. I hope our wives are listening. That. When we come together, we're geniuses. Together, we're a genius. Just one. Not mm-hmm. two of them, just one. No. We make one genius. Yeah. Apart, we're morons. But together, right. we're the genius. We need to get necklaces made where I have half of a lobe of a brain. Right. And you have the other ah, half. Because together. We come together, we have geniuses. one. <laughs> Why do I wear that? Because together, we're a genius. <laughs> what was like the... a genius is? No, no, no. 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 Just genius. one. Just one. We're <laughs> as smart as one genius. <laughs> we almost correctly told or knew what a day was almost a hundred years, years in, in advance. the future. Only We're off by two, by two days. Two days. So, <laughs> boom. Yeah, it sounds real smart when you say it that way. <laughs> yes. It sounds so much better than all we had to do was guess <laughs> Thursday, but we said yeah. Tuesday. We but we s- said it at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> It said it what is time. it? What is that? Let's see. <laughs> no, I guess that would be not make us geniuses. Uh, just telepathic. Telepathic. We have the same answer, even though it's wrong. We yeah. still have the same answer. Same answer. Yeah. Yeah. Never mind. All right. Destroying all of our theories all at one time. Yeah. All right. Well, that's our top ten list. Well, see, and even tragedies turn to can be uh, something good, something amazing. And it goes to show that, like, all these people that did all this stuff and has all this stuff, it, it it's in their brain. It's in yeah. our brain. That's the amazing part. Like, our brain is so crazy smart Yeah. that we just don't tap into it. 
and and actually use can't that use part. Like we can't. We can't tap into it. Yeah, like we don't have access to it. We it's need not like something we're, to happen. Yeah, it's not like I don't want to unlock that yeah. part of my brain. I want to be better right. at math. But I want to be able to draw and play music. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that would be great. Yeah, but well, it's we not have there. to. We have to find out a a a way. And I say we, not me and you, but like society, together. humanity, yeah, <laughs> together, we'll figure it out. Yeah, a way to tap into this stuff without the trauma, like yeah. without the hitting your head or well, sure. or getting struck by lightning or having fever or yeah. you know seizures. You know, we got to figure out a way to do this without actually having the harm and the suffering. Well, I think what this article proves is that. Brain damage is the thing that brings it out Mm -hmm. because when it's operating like it's supposed to, according to manufacturer specifications, right? Like you're not going to be able to do those things, right? But during either some sort of trauma or some sort of act or some sort of something, yeah, the perfect cell dies, something else is put not not really put in its place because your brain doesn't, yeah, produce more. Of itself mm-hmm. can't re you know uh, remake itself like yeah. heal itself uh, like skin or something right uh, something else is grows in its way or in its place uh, and then boom it yeah. just connects the right way yeah one part of your brain is connected to another that normally it wouldn't be right and it's like things make sense now now yeah. the math is are the analytical part of my brain is connected to the visual part and right. it's like it's all coming in together yeah so i mean the only reason things smell the way they smell is because your brain told you that's what it smells like yeah and that's a weird thought you that know is. what i mean so it's really just a matter of like cheese to you or like cheese yeah to you smells like how you smell and you can't yeah. you can only kind of describe it right but it doesn't mean that's how it. It's smell the same you. smell. It is the mm-hmm. same object, but what you smell is not what I smell. We can never really tell. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what that is. What that is. Yeah. yeah. So, it's a. Uh, that's why some people eat those jelly beans. They're like, that's exactly what it tastes like. Yeah. They're like, that doesn't that taste doesn't anything taste like, like, like it. So it's amazing. Like, oh, well, your brain's a little different, huh? Yeah. So you, to you, like. Cheese is like, or right. even chicken wings, which is like whatever yeah. is amazing. Something. That you, it's like, how come some people eat mushrooms? Well, to me, it makes me gag. Yeah. But other people are like, oh, they're so good with steak or with... I like mushrooms. You know, with, steak. with this yeah. certain sauce or this certain thing or yeah. an Italian food. And I'm like, oh, well, no, it makes me gag. Like, my body's like, no, that's no. terrible. Get that out of there. Yeah. Uh, that's just the taste, which is connected to the sense of smell. So, anyway, uh, it's amazing. I, I That would be great. They have to find that way to... Cause localized brain damage <laughs> in the areas where you need to uh, to be able to do these things. That would be just be just be epic. It would only need, because yeah, only because we can't do it now. Yeah, but if you have like generations later, like now it's just available to everybody. It's like uh, whatever. Like yeah, y'all couldn't do that. Oh man, y'all were dumb. Right. Like no, no excuse me. Yeah. We're the ones that conjoined our powers. Exactly. <laughs> and found out how to do this, you jerks. Yeah. Uh, but still. Oh, yeah. I'm off on the deep end now. I went total <laughs> neck. Total neck. neck. Right there, one. Complete neck. Um, but, I, but this gives hope for yeah. anyone listening to Budsverse, um, which you probably already have brain damage if you're listening to this podcast. Yeah. Um, well. There's hope for you. You're not alone. Your hope. There's hope because you may be the next savant. You may be the next painter or mathematician or, you know. Uh, yeah. You may be moving in with a goat soon. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you don't know. You never know. Uh, and life may be perfect for you. So so hang in there. Right. And, and this gives a good spin, a good, you know, not that we try to bring out uh, lessons in life through Bud's Verse. Sure. But... A good lesson in life is to realize that even when bad stuff happens, yeah. there's a good in it if you just search and find it. Yeah. It's there. Um, right. I mean, if you can get hit by lightning, 
and still have a good positive thing of that. Get shot in the head. Yeah. And still have something positive come out. Take I mean, anything apart and put it back together. I mean, those are extremes, of course. And we cool. don't hope that happens to anybody. No, no. But it just goes to show you that, man, you have one bad day, you know, one yeah. bad month, you're all right. Yeah. You know. It could be worse. But it could be at worse. at the same time, like, y- you're still here. Like, yeah. you're still, there's still it's a chance. On. There's still a chance. Don't give up and don't get too focused on the what everybody else says is like oh man that's just horrible hey you know yeah. you do you i do me right like don't worry about my horrible because it's just tuesday for me right you know they like, don't even worry about that i'll be all right anyway you're right you never know just keep hanging in there all things can work out yeah all right well i like it that is going to be the it for us today um uh <laughs> Brain damage can turn out good sometimes. Yeah. So that gives me hope. All right, guys. Till we see you next time. Or not see you, I guess. Do you hear ah, you? whatever. Until you hear us next time. Right. There we go. Sounds better. I guess we will say God bless, peace out, and we will see y'all later. Bye. <laughs>